So there are quite a few of you guys who have asked me to do a sharpening video. Let's get started. Let me go ahead and preface this by saying I am not a pro sharpener by any means. All right, I am just a hobbyist slash enthusiast, <laughs> enthusiast like the many of you guys that are probably watching this video and throughout this journey of me trying to learn how to sharpen knives, there's several people that were extremely helpful along the ways and that is David Barr from Edgeworks KTS and Eduardo from Jack and Noise. Guys, thank you so much. Like seriously from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much for sharing and being so generous with your time and knowledge. And for those of you guys who are watching this video, go check those guys out. They're extremely knowledgeable and they're just great guys in general, so give them a follow. As I said, I'm still learning how to sharpen knives. There are definitely much more knowledgeable people out there. And for those of you guys that are more knowledgeable and have a lot more experience that are watching this video, please don't be overly critical. And if you are, and if you want to share your knowledge with us or correct anything that I'm saying in the video, definitely share it down below. I am happy to discuss it. And also, I'm a lifelong learner. I, I am always happy to learn more. So comment down below. And this is my common sense approach to putting an edge on your knife. The first thing we need to talk about is sharpening material. I mean, there are a ton of sharpening supplies out there. I mean, there's wet stones, lapping stones, soaking stones, slashing goals, diamond plates, diamond stones. You know, I mean, there's, there's just a ton of stuff out there. I don't know what a diamond stone is, but there's just a ton of stuff out there. And the price range is from like $20 all the way to several hundred dollars. So there's a ton of shit out there. And me being on an average income, I sharpen on a budget and these are the things that I personally use, okay? I have a King 300 for more rough work where I need to remove more material such as, you know, when your knives are more dull or you have repairs you need to do a chip or things like that. I go with the 300 because it removes the material a lot faster and then I have the thousand grit which is what I normally use the most on just putting an edge back or, or sharpening your knife. I have this force to table double-sided stone which is a thousand and three thousand grit stone here and it comes with in this entire package right here i have the six thousand grit stone as well as a two by four a pine two by four and a raw leather strap that has no compound on it whatsoever but if you're really tight on a budget because i have done it for many many years being on an extremely tight budget you can honestly get away with just a thousand grit stone, which is a $20 stone that I picked up from one of the Asian grocery stores and a piece of raw leather. You know, if you don't have a piece of raw leather like this, you can easily just get an old leather belt. Don't have one, go check out, you know, any thrift stores and things like that, you can probably pick one out for several dollars. Or if you don't want to spend the several dollars, don't have the several dollars, find an old paper bag or some used cardboard that you have laying around and you can still use it as kind of a strop. For those of you guys who are using this as a shopping guide, I want to save you some money by telling you that there are certain things I want to add and switch out in my kit. The first thing I want to switch out is this 3000 grit forged to table double sided stone. The reason is, is I just don't really like double sided stones. I like the single sided stones and the 3000 grit stone I'll be replacing it with is the Chosera 3000. The next thing I want to switch out is actually getting a real leather strop and some strapping compound to add to it to try out. And then the last thing I will want to add to my kit is a flattening stone, which I still haven't gotten to yet. So before we move on to this video, you're probably asking me, Raph, why is there a piece of two by four in your sharpening kit? Well, it is actually used to remove a burr. This is something I learned from David Barr that he taught me that you can remove a burr of a knife by just drawing it through a piece of soft wood like this pine right here a couple of times you don't have to be super gentle with it but also don't try to you know carve a fucking angel out of this piece of wood you know just you know just don't baby your knife and just draw it a couple of times and it will remove the burr slash leftover wire that's kind of on the knife and expose the edge that you really want to be using so let's get straight into it first thing you need to do is prepare your stone what i mean by preparing your stone is to make sure that your wet stones are flat if you use wet stones this is something that you have to be concerned with if it's a new wet stone not so much if you use diamond plates this is nothing that you have to concern yourself with because the diamond plates are going to stay flat now the second thing is to read the freaking instructions that your stone comes with okay i know a lot of people don't think you need to read the instructions but yes you do because there are certain things 
like wet stones, they're splash and goes and they're soaking stones, okay? Soaking stones mean you need to soak it in the water. Splash and go mean you just splash a little bit of water on it and you can just start sharpening on that sucker, okay? But if you soak a splash and go stone, it can ruin it. So pay attention to the instructions. For the purpose of this video, we're gonna be sharpening this Dawa Leaf Spring Gyoto that I introduced to you guys several weeks back in my budget Gyoto video. So I'm just going to be using the Thousand Grit Stone today because this knife already has a very decent edge to it. It just needs a little refining. Whereas if your knife is extremely dull, you probably want to go with a lower grit stone to start putting a nicer edge on your, on your knife itself. But since this knife is pretty good, I'm just gonna sharpen it on the Thousand Grit and show you my process of sharpening. Now that my stone is nice and prepared, the first thing I want to do is kind of inspect the blade. Make sure the knife is nice and straight, there's nothing, no chips or anything like that. And one of the ways that will really, really protect you from sharpening the wrong part and removing material from the wrong parts of the knife is a Sharpie right here. This is something that David had told me many, many times. He's just like, if you're going to sharpen your knife and since you're a beginner and you're not, you don't have a ton of experience under your belt, the Sharpie will save you a lot of headaches. So what I'm gonna start doing first is I'm gonna take the Sharpie and I'm going to mark the edge of the knife. So that way I know I am properly removing and I can see where I'm removing material when I'm actually sharpening. Do is kind of just mark this edge right here with a Sharpie. And if you guys are worried about the Sharpie you know not coming off it's going to come off the knife you can just take some acetone or even some rubbing alcohol and it'll rub this sharpie line right off a lot of people have struggled with finding edge angle of the knife you know there are edge guides out there there are a lot of different techniques out there for you to find a proper angle but for me this is a more common sense approach which has worked for me for all the years that i've sharpened my own knives and it's just never failed me so this is what i do I just lay the knife flat onto the sharpening stone, press down half finger on the blade, fingertips, okay? Half fingertips on the blade, half fingertips on the stone, and then you just ever so gently lift the blade with your other hand, okay? And until you feel that blade is completely flush with the stone, there's your angle. I know there are other techniques that people probably prefer, but like I said, this is my common sense approach to sharpening knives. So if you have a better technique, tell me down below in the comments. Sharpening knives is more about consistency. It is constant pressure, constant angle to achieve a good edge. And another thing, when you're applying the strokes to the knife, to the stone itself, use the entirety of the stone. Because if you only use one small spot, that's how you develop these high and low spots on your stone. And it wears your stone down a lot faster. Now, Sharpen your knife sections at a time, okay? Pay attention to where your finger positions are. Don't ever drag your finger across the blade. That's how you get cut. Lift it up, put it down, lift it up, put it down, lift it up, put it down. Sometimes you'll see actually your finger tip marks on it, like your fingerprints on there, and that'll be a good guide on where you have already sharpened and applied pressure to. But of course, the Sharpie line is your saving grace when it comes to this, so you know. Okay, I've actually removed the material that I need there. And then once you've removed enough material and developed a burr, you flip it over and do the same process until you develop a burr on the other side. A burr is, we'll talk about that in a second. Let's go ahead and start sharpening. Now, go ahead and apply pressure. I like to start with a tip and start counting your strokes. See me checking? For the line, as you can see here, well, you probably can't see, but at the very tip of this, the Sharpie mark didn't get removed from the stone. So that's how you know that even though you're applying even pressure on just the tip, that it's still not hitting it. Now, depending on the stone that you have or the diamond plate that you have, some of them remove material much faster, so you probably only need like three or four passes. I have used this stone for quite a long time, so I know about seven to 10 passes Per section is a pretty good start, so that's why I'm doing like, you know, just counting my strokes through it. Like I said before, apply pressure to the spot that you're sharpening, half on the blade, half on the stone, and apply pressure as you're pushing away. Three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, nine, ten. As you can see, the Sharpie line is gone at the spot that I just got done sharpening, so I know for a fact that it is removing the material where I need it to. And for those of you guys who are just beginning on sharpening knives, dude, take your time. You don't have to work as fast as anyone else. Just take your time. Use this as a relaxing, meditating process and just slowly just sharpen your knives, man. It's, it's a nice, peaceful process, you know? So just enjoy the time, put on some music, focus, allow your brain to relax and go through the motion of it. And because sometimes when you rush, you ruin things, you know, you can really screw things up. So just take your time. There's no need to rush, it's not a race, it's a marathon. So just take your time, develop that burr, make sure everything is nice and consistent. And you end up with a sharp knife. All right, now that I have a burr on this side, I'm gonna go ahead and flip it over and count my strokes again. Flipping it over just to make sure that I am removing material at the right spot. Now that we have a nice burr that I can feel from one side moved along to the next, the reason I'm holding on to the paper towel is because while I was filling for a burr, I actually nicked myself a little bit on this really sharp corner in the back that it poked me, and, uh, and so I'm bleeding a little bit. So there is a hazard to sharpening knives, so pay extra close attention. I wasn't really paying attention because I was recording, and I nicked myself a little bit. So be very careful. So there are two ways of removing a burr. Some people have taught me that you can just glide it very gently very little pressure all the way through as you can hear okay you do the same on the other side okay use the entirety of the stone to work the entire blade through okay heel to tip Okay, now that I just have a slight wire, you can just use your 2x4, your trusty 2x4, okay, and just draw it through that edge a couple times. It's not going to hurt the edge. You can still feel a little bit of a burn. And then lastly, you'll want to use your strut, okay? What I usually do, I have a carabiner all hooked up to this thing, and I usually have this side attached to like a drawer or something like that where I can have a little bit of pressure to hold on to and then just strap it through. But for this demonstration purpose, you can also use it on a flat surface like this and just draw it back and forth. Remember the old school days where the barbers Drop your blades back and forth. I know this is probably not the right technique, but this is a technique that has worked for me so far. I see some people just kind of move through the motion like they do with sharpening. You can do that too because some people use sharpening compound. But for me, just back and forth. 
hit the entirety of the blade. Works for me really, really well. I know you guys have been waiting for this. Let's hope I didn't suck. I'd say it cuts. And it cuts really well. Look at that. Slides straight through. So this concludes my video for common sense sharpening on a budget and if you have any questions feel free to comment down below I'd be more than happy to talk to you guys you know I love staying in touch with everyone and for those of you guys who have a lot more knowledge than I have after you watch this video if you have something to add or if you have knowledge to share also definitely share it down below I'd love to hear it I'd love to learn it and I'm sure the people that are watching this video can also benefit from it so go ahead and share away and lastly if you can hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, it will mean the world to me and it will help me support all this madness. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.